Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 1st of March 2019 and the time has just gone 11.50 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 4th of March through Friday, through till Friday the 8th of March. Um, this, looking at the moves we've seen this week and particularly towards the back end of this week, it's been, broadly speaking, a fairly positive set. A very, very, very positive session. Uh, the FTSE is higher today, as is the, the CAC, the DAX, and the IBEX. Uh, some of the Eurozone equity markets have gone on to, to hit fresh multi month highs, um, and we are seeing a push push higher in the FTSE. And the FTSE has managed to shake off some of the, the ground it has lost uh, in recent sessions. Um, there's a few things going on um, US Chinese uh, trade relations uh, ended. Are, are heading in the right direction. Um, both Steve Mnuchin and Larry Kudlow of the US stated, uh, issued quite optimistic statements uh, in relation to the trade. There is more work to be done, but by and large, things are heading in the right direction. Uh, there was the uh, abrupt ending to the two days to the meeting between President Trump and the North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. Um, the, the leader of the North Korean state uh, demanded um, that all sanctions against this country be removed. Uh, that led to President Trump deciding to cut the meeting short. Uh, that did have a bit of a negative impact on the markets yesterday, kind of yesterday morning. Um, but traders are now that the dust has settled, uh, traders have realized that the meeting uh, didn't go according to plan, but also could have gone a lot worse. So I think sentiment in relation to that has been um, has has rebounded um, overnight. Uh, we saw some not great Chinese manufacturing numbers. The official Chinese manufacturing figure dropped came in at forty nine point nine. It was an improvement on the month and is better than expected. But to be fair, it is in contraction territory. But because it appears to be heading in the right direction, uh, we have seen a bit of a bounce back in mining stocks and also uh, in the in, in energy stocks as well as that. Um, looking ahead to next week on Tuesday the fifth, uh, we have the uh, Chinese Kaishin survey of Kaishin survey of the services sector. Uh, that, that's obviously going to be in focus to see how well the Chinese economy is performing. In recent years, the Chinese government has made a concerted effort to move away from heavy industry and manufacturing more towards services. So any kind of economic indicators on China, will, traders will be keeping a close eye on to see how well the uh, the Chinese economy is doing. Um, on Tuesday, also on Tuesday, we have the Eurozone Services PMI, PMI numbers. Um, the Eurozone has been producing some, broadly speaking, underwhelming economic indicators. This morning, um, on, on Friday the 1st of March, uh, we, had a, we had manufacturing numbers from Spain, Italy, France and Germany. And by and large, um, they, were, they, were, they were fairly downbeat. Uh, the German, um, the German figures were in contraction territory, as were the Spanish and Italian. Um, so we're, we're seeing a situation whereby economic indicators in the Eurozone are fairly negative, but we, we actually are seeing equity markets rally. Uh, some traders out there view negative news as positive news, whereby the worse the economic indicators are from the Eurozone, it's potentially it's possible, that the, uh, it's possible that the Eurozone, that the European Central Bank are going to react by actually talking about potentially introducing some additional targeted, targeted lending. So the services figures out of the, out of the, of the Eurozone on Tuesday the 5th are going to be, are going to be, uh, are, are going to be uh, very valuable because that could potentially uh, signal what the, Euro the European Central Bank are going to do, or more importantly, what they're going to say on Thursday the 7th. Because on the Thursday the 7th of March, we actually have the European Central Bank interest rate decision and statement. Now, no change is expected to the actual underlying interest rate, but the statement... Uh, it's probably going to be the highlight of the session. And as, as you see before with the Eurozone for the last number of years, if they're ever going to alter their policy, they often spend several months in advance talking about it. And in the last few weeks, you've have heard um, rumblings out of the Central Bank, the European Central Bank, that they may look at in, uh, you know, adding another round of tariff liquidity. So traders will be looking out for that. And that's part of the reason why we're, why we're seeing the DAX, the CAC, and the IBEX all at multi-month highs, even though the economic indicators from the region are actually getting worse. Um, it's also worth pointing out and balancing that we have we saw some steady unemployment and CPI numbers from the Eurozone. So I'm sure today, so I'm sure that's going to get a mention, uh, a reference uh, in next week's meeting. But listen now for any clues about potential changes from the ECB in terms of uh, in terms of language about what they could do down the line. 
Uh, on Friday, at the back end of next week, we have the all-important US non-farm payrolls report. Uh, we're expecting 170,000 jobs to have been added. Uh, but keep in mind, in the previous month, there were the, the previous report showed that 304,000 jobs were added. Now, it's also worth pointing out that traders, ec economists are stating that because of the US government shut down a, num a large portion of government employees were finding work, be it part-time work or, or any work they could get, in, in order to compensate for the government shutdown. So it's possible we could see a large, we, we could see uh, a, a large drop off and possibly even a revision to that number of 304,000. Um, in terms of the actual unemployment rate for the United States, the unemployment rate is tipped to come in at 3.8%. And keep an eye out for average earnings. Uh, on a month on month basis, average earnings are tipped to be 0.3%. And on a yearly basis, average earnings are tipped to be 3.3%. Um, essentially, the, the, the average earnings component of the job support has become more and more important. Essentially, the more money Americans earn, the more likely they are to go out and spend it. And that's going to hopefully keep, uh, keep the economy pushing, pushing along. Uh, for those uh, updates that I haven't mentioned uh, next week, on Tuesday the 5th, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, um, will have their interest rate decision. No change expected there. On Tuesday the, the 5th, Ashtead in the UK have third quarter numbers out. As I mentioned, European Eurozone, European services are out on Tuesday. Also on, on Tuesday, we have updates from the US retailers, Coles and Target Corporation. On Wednesday, here in the UK, we have Just Eat, our full year figures. Uh, on Wednesday, the Bank of Canada interest rate decision and statement. On Thursday, as mentioned, the European Central Bank um, interest rate decision and statement. And also, of course, finishing on Friday with the non-farm pills report. Uh, I'll take a look now at a few of the major markets and see how they're doing. Starting off with the FTSE 100, as we can see here, uh, the FTSE 100 has been bouncing back since late December. It's not as been in as a good a shape as our as the, as the mainland uh, European equity markets are doing in terms of recovery, but it's getting there nonetheless. So we've seen the bounce back, the higher high, the higher low, the higher high, the higher low. The market did manage to put, push a uh, create a multi-month high in February, but it has cooled. But as you can see here, the market is in process of bouncing back. Yet again, and if you could hold above the 7040 level, we could see the market head back up towards 7200 or 7220, which is this region here. And should we go beyond that, the 20 moving average, the risk red line here at 7277 might come into play. Should we see a move to the downside, support might come into play from this from this yellow line here, the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 6975. And you notice how um that you know, you'll notice how the this blue line here the 50 moving average isn't too far below it so that this entire region and, and the 50 moving average comes into play just below it and you can see here that the 50 moving average managed to act as support on a number of occasions in january so it makes it more likely that we could see it acting as support in the near term we'll take a look at the dax now uh, which has hit its highest level in a number of months this morning so the DAX is uh, as pushed higher, is driven higher this morning on the 1st of March. We can see that it's up at levels not seen uh, since early November. So I give you an indication of how bullish it is. The DAX has been pushing higher since uh, December and we're now at a multi-month high. We've broken well above the, the this uh, trend line here, which previously was acting in resistance. If you draw a line from the highs of June through July and also through September, we get this trend line here. We can see now that, that we're well above that. And if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this region here, which is in around the 11,690 area or 11,700. If we continue to break beyond that and push push higher, we could be looking at targeting this red line here, the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 11,862. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 12,000. Uh, should we see a bit of a pullback or a move to the downside, support might come into play in around where this this trend line is, uh, which would be in around the kind of 11,300 mark, or possibly from this yellow line here, the water day moving average, which comes into play just north of 11,200. And you notice how the water day moving average managed to act as um, as a support and resistance uh, only only a few only a few a few weeks ago. So it makes it more likely that it will do do so in the future. I'll take a look now at what's going on with the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has, has had a remarkable recovery from late December. We're well above um, its tra trading above its 200-day moving average. 
although we are simply running out of steam when we approach the uh, this this area here at 2,817, 2,820. On a few occasions in October, in November, and in December, the market failed to break above the 2,817 or 2,820 mark. So that, that's going to be a big one to keep an eye out for. If you can break above it, we could be looking at heading up towards here, um, the lows of uh, the low, this, this region here, in, a, in around uh, 2,865. If we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards 2,900. Uh, moves to the downside, may find some support from the one or two moving average, which comes to play at 2,676. I take a quick look now at Euro Sterling. Um, Euro Sterling. So Euro, Euro Sterling um, has been in a solid downward trend since, since December. If you draw a trend line between the highs of December, January, and February, we get this line here. And essentially, while we remain below that line, it is likely we could see further losses. During the week, uh, we, we fell back to a level not seen since May 2017 on Euro Sterling. So, giving an indication of how um, bearish the move has been recently. And if we continue to drive on lower, we could be looking at targeting zero spot 85. And if the market does manage to bounce back, uh, we could see it run, run into resistance in around the zero spot 87 area. One last thing before I go, uh, as I mentioned, the non-farm perils, we are holding a non-farm perils live webinar on Friday, the 8th of March. Um, you can sign up on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com, under the Learn section, you'll, you'll, find the web, you'll find the webinars and events section, and you can sign up there. Uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC, please feel free to leave review and click reviews. Thank you very much.